Tesla rested for about five days after its last move and despite being up you know 96 97 percent uh going into today's trading day uh apparently you know welcome to access a trader the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success profitability and longevity thank you for joining us here's dan shapiro to help you find your edge master your process and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Please like, subscribe, share, tell a friend, tell a friend, right? Or more important, please uh, continue to support. Again, we will try to uh, give you as, as much uh, in-depth unbiased opinion uh, as possible. So here's another uh, example. In case you haven't uh, figured out kind of the, the theme of what's going on in 2023 or when a market becomes toned up to bad news. Uh, here's another perfect example, right? Uh, that it really does show you that you don't need to make sense of this market. I, I think a lot of people uh, spend way too much time and have way too much time in their hands debating with total strangers what they believe is should happen based on headlines. Headlines are headlines, right? Headlines uh, are there for you to interpret and see how the mass right reacts to those headlines and here's a perfect example uh, like we've seen uh, countless other stocks uh, that come out with bad earnings okay uh, layoff workers uh, everything looks grim and stock price appreciates because again we spent a whole year 2022 uh, being in full misery mode if you are investors uh, and you saw the NASDAQ down 33%. You saw the S&P uh, down nearly 20%. And that, that took a lot of toll. As we said, you know, eventually investors and traders, they become tone deaf. Uh, they become kind of numb to bad news. And then stocks that come out with bad news, the ones that have a history, a track record, a history of really good products with really good margins and uh, in tremendous growth for generations and generations and generations, uh, they're the ones that get reported. Here's a perfect, another perfect example. Uh, you got Disney, right? This is, you know, they came out with the headline uh, and the initial reaction was, well, wait a minute, how can they, they lose subscribers? Isn't that a bad thing? And they come out with a number, another number, right? And the number says, well, we just laid off 7,000 workers, right? It doesn't seem like it's a good thing, okay? Uh, and that's the point. Nobody, you know, nobody is smarter than the reaction from the crowd. Uh, people have their own interpretation of what they think is going to happen. And I think if you, you know, use your time productively, okay, and just uh, generate the discipline and the patience to trade off the reaction versus trade off the headline, I think it becomes a lot easier to digest. And again, you can save yourself countless hours not fighting uh, with strangers uh, on the internet, right? So here's another scenario, bad, bad, bad equals good. Look at Disney stock up 9% uh, after the close. It's also taking uh, Netflix. It has some, you know, some pretty good buying. Uh, also is taking Netflix uh, into a little bit of ride uh, with it, right? Netflix is up about uh, Netflix is up about uh, six points after hours as well, and this is obviously giving a little bit of a boost uh, to everything. Um, you know, after yesterday's crazy roller coaster session, and as we saw, uh, as we saw the market go up, and then the market go down, and the market go up, uh, like we talked about in last night's video, uh, there was a shot that we had an inside day. Again, if you're a brand new trader, uh, inside day, all it means is the market doesn't take, or in this case, the cues. Uh, it doesn't take out the previous day's high. It doesn't take out the previous day's low. It's just there digesting the previous day. And the fact that we had such incredible wide average true ranges yesterday, uh, it's very, very easy how, it, how an inside day uh, could be established. Uh, it looked really awful this morning, right? It really did. Uh, you know, the whole AI giveth and taketh away scenario, right? That's like the hot group out there. Well, ask Google how hot it was. So apparently Google had some sort of, you know, some sort of AI demonstration, right? A live demonstration of what they thought uh, was going to be kind of a really, really cool thing. Now keep in mind, this isn't some $2 stock doing this. This is Alphabet, this is Google, right? Just Google it. And apparently the whole live event went to hell in a handbasket when uh, their AI, right? AI um, apparently did not do very AI certain things. And not only, and this is kind of what apparently is right now, 
not only uh, there's nobody perfect as far as human beings go, right? We're all schmucks and idiots. Apparently now robots are not perfect as well. Uh, dramatic move on Google down about seven and a half, eight percent throughout the day. It took down everything with it. And all in all, when you look at today's session, you look at yesterday's session, again, from the technical point of view, it's not the worst thing in the world. Um, where it becomes interesting, right? Where it becomes really, really interesting. And this is where we started seeing uh, a lot of names that had really big runs, uh, like a Microsoft, for example, you know, incredible run. And they were obviously uh, the, the beneficiary of the Google bad news, because again, they have their own AI, uh, like I pretty much every company does now as well, or at least developing them. But the, their initial push was very, very strong out the gate. Again, we'll get to the individual pivots in a second. Again, I apologize. E-Signal just has these random wicks after after hours and, and, and uh uh, pre-market is so damn annoying, but uh, you know, Amazon, excuse me, Microsoft had a big push at the open, uh, along with a lot of really strong stocks that we highlighted yesterday on the video. You know, we talked about AMD, we talked about Nvidia, and one of the names we finally said, hey, is this finally going to be day for Tesla to break out? And Tesla did break out, right? Did break out. The problem with this breakout, and again, I, I want to use the word problem uh, very, very loosely, it broke out on the wrong day, right? You know, Tesla rested for about five days after its last move. And despite being up, you know, 96, 97% uh, going into today's trading day, uh, apparently, you know, if, if Tesla would have broken out yesterday, the day before, the day before that, we would have been having this conversation, I think, at, north of 210. But uh, today was one of those days that it did break out, did very well. This is the highest close in this whole formation going back uh, all the way to November the 14th. And if you see the option flow coming into Tesla, this is kind of what we always talk about, option flow, option flow, option flow. Even when the market was selling off today, and at one point, uh, the queues were really, you know, just, just really getting hammered. Uh, you know, they were coming for, you know, the 210s, the 215s, the 220s. I saw some 233 and a halves. I saw some February uh, excuse me, March 250 calls. So the institutional money flow uh, was definitely kind of putting the blinders on um, as far as weakness today in the market and, you know, and really, you know, propel Tesla to higher prices. Uh, as you can see, it stopped right again, right at the channel here off this two, two, uh, 233, apologize, 203 level, which is the high in this whole formation here. Uh, whole formation here going back to November, and that's the high, exactly the high of the day. Uh, if Tesla again shakes off some, you know, shakes off some news uh, and shakes off some weakness tomorrow and starts rebuilding today's channels, the, again, depending how, how, you know, how aggressive the, the option flow is in the morning, uh, we could see a move to 206. We could see a move to 213. And the way they were betting this 220 level uh, is uh, going to be uh, very, very uh, important if, if Tesla. Uh, obviously wants to stretch uh, anything into weakness. Um, I think tomorrow in names like a Tesla, despite again, being up over 100% in a month, uh, you know, the market, the market is speaking, the market is driving uh, stocks higher. And you can see that this morning uh, with early pushes in uh, some very, very strong names. And again, you know, here, here's the, the pivot feed. Uh, here's the pivot feed from this morning. Again, 199, or, you know, you know t tell me if you heard this before, right? You know, we've talked about the 199, 200 level for for, for a week and a half now, right? 199 rejected twice, needs to confirm uh, the whole planet, right? We joked, effectively joked around, the whole planet is watching that. Even my mom called me up and said, Dan, we still like this 200 pivot. Yeah, we still like the pivot, right? Uh, if it stalls out of 200, then use break even as you stop. As we all know, retail piles in and there's always the last reaction. If it starts going, you can see the 210, 220s weekly calls coming in, especially Monday. Uh, Tesla, you know, nice move today, really nice move today. Uh, we started buying this thing uh, we started buying this thing on the previous day's high, that 217 and a half, 18 level confirmed, added more through 19, uh, what, excuse me, 199 level, it traded all the way up to that 203 level, and that's where it stopped technically. Uh, so really nice trade, uh, continues to be a nice trade. Um, look, if it bases out tomorrow and it holds, uh, I do believe we could see 205, 206 initially, and if it really starts getting extended, who knows, maybe we could get uh, a stronger move uh, into that 212, 213 level. We'll see, you know, we'll see here. Uh, obviously I put in this pivot on, on Google before the AI news uh, came out. Uh, 108.20 needs to build, obviously came, it came nowhere near that. Uh, Meta, 193.80 needs to confirm, obviously never got there. Uh, AMD was, was really surprising today, really, really nice move today on AMD, uh, 
uh, needs to build. Here was AMD, right? Really nice move here. So it took out this 8630. We talked about it last night on the video. Here's the 86 whole 30 range, and it stopped right at the top of supply here uh, at that uh, 88 level. So nice move, really nice move on uh, AMD. Congratulations to you guys who caught it. Uh, ZS went only up a dollar. Uh, ZM uh, ZM uh, didn't didn't confirm. Uh, there was a pivot that I, I forgot to put on the feed, but you know we, we broadcast this thing. Everybody hears the pivot anyway. Uh, there was a pivot there uh, for experienced traders. Uh, the 225, uh, 225 and change pivot on NVIDIA that ran up a couple of bucks really quick. Uh, Microsoft did really well. Uh, for experienced traders, 273.60 needs to confirm for more upside. Here was uh, Microsoft, right? So it took out this opening range, this whole, you see this whole area here, 273.60 and traded up to the 277 level. Really nice move on uh, Microsoft before it gassed out uh, and got tired. Uh, coin, uh, coin never got up to the 76 level. And I believe that is it, right? I believe that is it. So right now uh, you're getting some spikes here in a lot of names uh, after hours. Uh, Tesla is up about a buck. Uh, after hours, you're seeing, a, again, a strong move on Netflix. Uh, but the key, again, kind of going into tomorrow's session, again, guys, the, the volatility here is, is, is getting very aggressive, right? Uh, the one thing that we don't want as traders, at least I don't, okay? I think a lot of traders, uh, they confuse the word uh, volatility with average true range. We trade beta, right? That's 90% of all my trades. Um, and average true range is, you know, a stock's breakdown of its channel to channel, uh, measured potential. Volatility is what you saw yesterday, right? Volatility is when the market goes up and down, up and down, up and down. It's all fun and games until things get volatile, right? Every, you know, traders use the word, we love volatility. No, you don't love volatility. That's called anarchy. That's called, uh, that's called, you know, being pillaged. You know, you like average true range. You like to have the ability for a stock to really expand to have measured potential. When you get to uh, when you get to volatility, that is violence. That is like the purge. That is you know that's everything that you cannot control on a day to day basis. Just imagine what trading a Fed day is. Just imagine trading that every single day. Right? That's violence. Who the hell wants to trade a market that goes up? aggressively it comes back down aggressively we're not micro you know micro managing every single position trying to scalp these things for 10 cents we're trying to get dollars we're trying to get a big measured move so when you see that type of volatility come in you want to be a little bit more reserved so the last thing you want to do is continue to pushing strength in names like nvidia i love nvidia you know nvidia is one of my favorite stocks microsoft they had their runs right wait for stocks like i've been saying all you know for years and years and years Wait for stocks that are just coming out of ranges, whether they're consolidation ranges, uh, whether they are uh, continuation ranges, whether they're just natural breakouts. Again, like we say all the time, at least you're jumping uh, off an area that you can survive. When you buy Microsoft uh, in orbit, NVIDIA in orbit after this run, it's very, very tough uh, to have a very, you know, very reasonable safety net. And that's a very uh, important level when you are trading. Again, when, when you, the most important part is identifying risk and making sure those levels uh, get confirmed. And if they do lose those levels, again, it's a scraped knee, uh, not a severed head. So that's it, guys. That's it. We're trying to, uh, we are definitely uh, watching both sides of the market tomorrow. If this volatility continues to kick in, you want to make sure that both sides are covered. Um, I still want to watch, just in case, uh, you see the bottom of the range here. We talked about this last night. Um, I still want to watch this 302 level in case they decide to pull the market tomorrow. Because if they do decide to pull it, I like this 302 level. If the Qs lose that 302, uh, we could get downside. Uh, Amazon uh, continues to look like crap. It, it came out with earnings, continues to look like garbage. I'm watching the bottom channel here. I'm also going to watch Google tomorrow on the bottom channel here in case it loses this rising support in the 20 day. If there is indeed a, a second day of selling uh, in Google, obviously to the upside, you have Tesla. Uh, let's see if it could continue this upside push into this 206, maybe 212 level. Uh, Netflix, let's see how it reacts to uh, Disney. Disney coming off a little bit here uh, after it made its initial high. So we don't know by the time you you see this broadcast, maybe Disney's still up 8%, maybe it's only up 2%, who the hell knows? But again, I tried to record uh, these, these videos before my kids uh, start their events, and I have to take my daughter to uh, basketball practice right now. So again, the key is every single day, 
uh, you know, no expectations, right? No expectations, guys. If you put in your work the night before and you do your research, you are prepared. So no expectations equals no disappointments. That means you're not emotionally attached or emotionally sensationalizing what you think is gonna happen to the next day. Let everything play out organically. Wait for the channels to confirm. And when they do confirm, strike with extreme confidence, strike with extreme prejudice, and strike as you are a professional. Guys, God bless. I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow's Thursday, so there is no uh, video on Thursdays. That's my day to kind of rest. If you are joining us tomorrow in the live webinar, I look forward to working with you. Guys, God bless, and I will see you all soon. Take care.